Hi everyone, today we're looking at how to use the Slider Revolution plugin with Avada. In this video I will show you how to install Slider Revolution, we will explore the interface and then look at the process of creating sliders using a demo slider as an example. I'll also show you how to add sliders to the page in various ways. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. Slider Revolution is one of the most popular of all WordPress slider plugins. It allows you to create both simple and very complex sliders for your website. Let's take a closer look. Slider Revolution is included in Avada as a premium plugin. This allows you to use the full features of the plugin and to get updates to the plugin through our server. There are also add ons to the plugin you can access by upgrading to the premium version by purchasing your own individual license. But for most people, the included license is more than enough. The first thing to do is install the plugin, and with Avada, this couldn't be easier. Just go to Avada, Plugins, Mouse Over Slider Revolution, and click on Install. This adds the plugin with one click and adds a Slider Revolution menu item to the dashboard. If you have imported a demo that includes a Slider Revolution slider, then it will be installed during the demo import. I've imported the author demo here and so the link is already on my dashboard. Clicking on this opens the Slider Revolution dashboard. Along the top are some navigation items. Modules refers to the top section here, which is where you can add, delete, or manage modules. A module is basically a slider. Updates scrolls down to the update section and history, where you can see what version you're on. As mentioned, you can update Revolution Slider through Avada without having to purchase any license, but this is done through Avada Plugins, where we update the plugin soon after it is updated, and not the plugins page, where the update is coming via the plugin author. As we can see here, this install is completely up to date. If you do purchase a Slider Revolution license, the activation area is where you would enter your purchase code. This unlocks all their pre made templates, images, videos, icons, pre made layers and animations, a bunch of plugin add ons, and gets you access to the support center. There is a news section where you can connect with Theme Punch, and there is a global settings link to set global defaults. There is also an FAQ link that goes to the Theme Punch support site, and a support link that is just a nag to purchase the premium license. OK, so let's go back to the top and see how this plugin works. There's no way around the fact that this plugin has a bit of a steep learning curve. It's just so fully featured that it takes a while to learn. But if we click on New Module, we get the possibility of running a guide to help us through the basic process of creating a slider. Let's start that. So the first step is to choose what type of module you'd like to create. There are three. A slider, which has multiple slides. A scene, which is essentially a single slide with no navigation. And a carousel, which has multiple slides visible at the same time. Let's keep it simple and add a scene. The next step is to determine the size of the module. Again, there are three options. Auto, which will adjust to the surrounding container width while keeping its aspect ratio. Full width, which will always span the full width of the page. And full screen, which as it sounds, always fills the full area of the viewport. We'll go with full width. The final step of the wizard is all about responsive resizing. The first option is classic linear resizing which has layers that resize in a linear fashion as the module size changes. The second option, Intelligent Inheriting, activates four custom device sizes, and the layer's size and position is automatically calculated from the desktop size, or you can make your own individual adjustments. The final option is Manual Custom Sizes, which is much the same as option two, only you control all the four custom sizes. I'll try the Intelligent Inheriting option. So now we can go to the editor, and here we can see the empty Slider Revolution Editor interface. It's completely empty, and while that's what you want for new sliders, it's not so great for an orientation. Instead, let's go back to the dashboard and look at the slider that has been made for this demo. OK, that looks a bit better. Let's have a look around. At the top left are some navigation icons. 
From the WordPress icon, you can navigate to anywhere on the WordPress dashboard. And with back, you can just go one step back. With slides, you can see the slides that are in this specific slider and add new ones. And there is an add layer link next to that. There are many types of layers you can add in Slider Revolution, including text, images, buttons, shapes, even audio and video. In the top middle of the screen, you can see context relevant tools. At the moment, they are showing the current canvas size, but if I selected a layer, it would show tools related to that. This slide has four different sizes turned on, which we can choose from the screen icon. And as we do, we can see the different responsive layouts of this slide and the canvas size along the top. The other icons at the top right are for a selection menu where you can choose how to make selections, a history states menu where you can step back with what you've done, and on the right hand side of the screen icon, there's a help mode which you activate by clicking the question mark, and something called quick content. This is context sensitive, so if you have a text layer selected, it will bring up fonts, and if you had a button selected, it will bring up button styles, etc. On the far right at the top, we find four more icons, which control the panel below them. The first opens the module general options, which hold a large range of options specific to the whole slider. The second one opens the navigation options, which will only show if you have multiple slides in your slider. The third icon opens the slide options, and the fourth opens the layer options. These will also auto-select as you click on the various items on your screen. In the middle, of course, we can see the slide preview area. The dotted line represents the slide canvas, where any content will be restricted to. Finally, at the bottom is the timeline editor. Here we can see all the individual layers that are in the slide, and a timeline showing when they appear and disappear. If I scrub across the timeline, for example, you can see the individual layers appear on the screen. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how this slider has been constructed. The first thing to look at is how many slides the slider contains. As we can see by mousing over the slides menu, there are three actual slides in this slider. And if we click on global layers, we can see there is a section here that is on all three of those layers. Going through that on the timeline, we can see the various layers in the global layers section. If we just mouse over them on the timeline, they are highlighted on the canvas. There's a background card, the two buttons at the bottom, a title, a subtitle, some copy, and the image. If we scrub over the timeline, we can see this content fades in after one second. Okay, let's go to the first slide to see how that's been constructed. Again, we can see the many layers that this slide is made up of including text, images, buttons, and even overlay gradients. Again, if we slowly scrub across the timeline, we see how the background image fades in, and the remaining layers do as well, all at different times and for different durations. Let's just finally look at the site in the Live Builder, and here we can see the slider in action at the top of the page. The slides display and rotate automatically, and we can see the global layers showing on every slide. To add a completed slider revolution slider to the page is easy. If we just head to the page options in the sidebar panel, we can then head to the sliders tab. And here we can see that slider revolution has been chosen as the slider type, and that the specific slider, Avada Author Hero, has been added to this page. This slider has been placed in the default position, which is below the header. But in this case, because the header is transparent, the slider moves right up underneath the header to the top of the page. You can also add a slider revolution slider anywhere in your page content using the slider revolution element. Please follow the link for more information on that. Okay, as you can see from this video, slider revolution is both fully featured and reasonably complex. If you want to display sliders on your website, it's a very popular option. And while the learning curve is significant, there is good documentation and plenty of videos for you to learn how to make the type of slides you require. We're not going any further down the rabbit hole in this video, but hopefully you now have an understanding of the interface and a good idea about how the plugin works at a basic level. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use Slider Revolution with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.